Well, here's one of the molds I cut out of uh, florist foam on our CNC mill. And I've got uh, a little dam made of uh, aluminum tape running around through the cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the area inside that dam with plaster to make the uh, a negative for a a 10 inch lightweight telescope mirror. I'm going to fill it with uh, refractory plaster and uh, we'll see how this goes. I haven't tried, I just tried a little bit of experimental molding in this foam and uh, this is going to be, this is going to be a big all up test and we'll see how it goes. I'll show you more later. There it is filled with uh, Ransom and Randolph Mold Mix 400 plaster up to the top. I just gotta uh, let it set up and then I can start uh, taking the foam out of the crevices and see see what I got. It should be interesting. Show you more later. Okay I'm starting to break the mold apart. This is the next day by the way after uh, pouring the plaster so it's, uh, it's good and hard now and I can start taking the mold apart and uh, it comes off in chunks pretty easy. I'm going to have to uh, get some dental tools out probably and dig it out of the channels here. Hopefully that will go pretty easy. thought about just burning the plastic off, uh, the foam off. It, uh, it burns pretty readily, like napalm. But it gives off big clouds of black smoke and a really bad stink. And I'm afraid about... Um, uneven heating causing spalling on the plaster so I think I'll probably just go ahead and uh, do it the hard way and dig it out and uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll, uh, I'll show you a little more later. There's the bulk of it off. Now the fun part begins. Got my little tools out. I'm going to start digging it out of the uh, out of the channels here. And I'm going to have to be careful because there should be a pin about five sixteenths of an inch in diameter cast sticking up inside these wells here. There's three of them. So I have to be careful not to break that plaster pin off as I'm digging out the uh, digging out the, the foam. So it's going to have to be kind of delicate, especially in spots. And I don't want to, you know, crack the plaster anywhere or chip the corners. So it's going to be a little bit of fiddly, fiddly work here. See how it goes. Well, this isn't going so well. This is about 20 minutes of work so far, digging this stuff out with my little tools. It's uh, very difficult, and I'm pretty sure I've managed to bust this pin loose. It, uh, yeah, it's wiggling. It's broken. So I'll have to uh, cement that back down, too, and be careful getting this stuff out around the other two. I don't want to bust them loose, too. So, I'm going to have to try a different tactic. I'm going to give this some thought and see if I can come up with something that's going to work better. More later. Well, I tried every solvent I've got around the house, and uh, nothing touches this foam. Not acetone, not alcohol, not uh, petroleum distillates. Nothing seems to dissolve it, so it's tough stuff. But what I'll probably end up doing is maybe I'll just dry this thing out in the oven at a fairly low temperature, then put it in the kiln and burn the remaining foam out of it. Um, hopefully the neighbors won't call the fire department because uh, i got a feeling it's going to be smoky and stinky. So that's kind of where I am now. Further updates coming. Okay. After baking the mold in the kiln at 700 degrees F for a few hours, the um, the foam has sort of shrunk down. Most of it's burned off, but there's still some in between uh, in the channels, in between the hexagons. But it's shrunk down and it's not held in there very tightly. And now I can just sort of pry it out. If I can do this while I'm holding the camera, just sort of pry it out, bring it up like that. So, like that. So that's a good thing. It's coming out much easier now. I'm not breaking off 
pins or hexagons. So, and then I should be able to either use compressed air or a vacuum cleaner to get the uh, the remaining dust out of the channels after I get the last pieces of foam out. And then I'll be ready to put this in the bottom of a mold and cast some glass and make myself a uh, another hexagon back mirror. So, uh, more to come. Thanks for watching. There it is with uh, the last of the foam remnants cleaned out. The foam seems to have turned into something resembling foamy graphite. It's like it's totally carburized or something. But it came out easy enough, without any trouble. Nice clean channels, no damage. I'm very pleased. Just a 700 degree soak in the kiln for a few hours. And it came out in just a couple of minutes. No muss, no fuss. I think I spent 20 minutes a half hour trying to trying to pick it out before. So this is great. Can't wait to uh, try casting some glass with this. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so here's the final mold all put together. I've got the uh, the plaster cast mold here, all cleaned out. Got all the remnants of the foam and the ash out of it. I took it outside and blew it out with some compressed air. Got it nice and clean. And it's sitting in the middle of a uh, ring cut out of uh, soft fire brick that's cemented together with furnace cement and reinforced with some uh, with some stainless steel wire and lots of furnace cement. It's ugly but it uh, it works. It holds together in the kiln. The pressure of the glass, even if the even if the brittle refractory brick breaks, the wire will hold the mold together. It won't separate and glass won't leak out. So it works pretty well for me. And the gap, I don't know if you can see it down there, the gap between the plaster mold and the fire brick ring is filled with sand down at the bottom. Just ordinary silica sand. So I filled that gap up, up to the bottom of the channels in the plaster mold. So now it's ready to get some, uh, some glass piled in it and then the whole thing can go in the kiln and melt and we'll see what happens. It should be interesting to see what, uh, what comes out. Updates later. If I calculated correctly, and there's always and if, because sometimes I've spectacularly miscalculated. But if I've calculated correctly, that is the correct amount of glass for what I want to do. Three pounds, three ounces of glass. Should fill the channels and leave a thin surface layer. Now, I'm not trying to make a complete honeycomb mirror here. What I'm going to do, I'm doing something a little different this time. To try and ensure that the, the, the part of the mirror that gets ground is completely free of bubbles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast the honeycomb back separately and then fuse a bubble-free sheet of glass on top of it. And uh, we'll see how this works out. It uh, may be a complete disaster. It may be completely brilliant. There's no telling at this point. I'll have to see what comes out of the kiln. More later. Well, here's the mold out of the kiln. Um, I added a little extra glass um, before I fired the uh, kiln because I always, I know from experience, I tend to underestimate the amount of glass. So I put about maybe 10 or 15 percent extra glass in there just to make sure I had enough. And it's something I normally do anyway, but forgot to do this time. So anyway, you know, at first glance, it looks pretty good. It's fairly smooth. It's fairly bubble free. It's got a little bit of a concave meniscus around the edge which happens when um, the glass tends to stick to the mold material but uh, the main problem with this is there's one spot right here where for some reason the glass did not completely cover and uh, fill in in this area right here and it goes right down to the plaster this little void I don't quite know what happened there. The glass in that area is kind of uh, milky looking, so maybe it suffered from some 
devitrification right there and got a little too viscous to flow properly. I don't know. I don't know if this is salvageable or not. Um, I may try doing some experiments with it just to after I demold it and um, machine down the uh, the meniscus at the edge, I may try fusing a piece of flat glass onto the top of it anyway, just to uh, just to see how that goes, even with this uh, little void over here, just to see how it works out. So anyway, um, on the whole, it's not too bad. I mean, there's certainly some room for improvement, but uh, not too bad for my first effort with these uh, with these machined molds. So. Uh, I'm obviously going to be doing more of this. I mean, uh, the details are all there. The pins are down in there. Um, the back of this glass should look very interesting once I get it out of the mold. And uh, see what it looks like on the back. So, anyway, making progress. Making progress. Thanks for watching. Okay, here's the piece with the mold pried off of it. And... Um, the excess mold material ground off the edge of the blank. I did not turn it perfectly round. I'll do that later. I just wanted to get um, all of the mold material that was stuck onto the side of it off. I'm working on molds that will not stick to glass, but this uh, this was an older mold I used for this piece, and unfortunately the glass sticks to it really well. So. Uh, I had to do a lot of grinding to get the residual mold material off. Um, I also knocked down the meniscus, the concave meniscus that was sticking up at the edge all the way around. So I knocked that down too with a little bit of cold working. So even though this piece has this void in it, I'm going to try fusing another plate of glass on top of this. This is only a quarter of an inch thick above the hexagons here. So this void does allow me to uh, check one thing. It allows me to check the depth of the glass, which uh, is, is kind of hard to see just by looking. But since I've got a void that goes all the way from the surface of the glass down to the top of uh, one of the hexagon inserts there, I can actually just measure it with my uh, dial caliper here. And I was shooting for... I was shooting for a quarter of an inch and it looks like I'm just like ten thousandths shy of that so that's that's pretty close I don't normally get that close so that's pretty good glass estimating on my part um, I'm happy about that so so it's right where I wanted it to be but it's nowhere near thick enough to grind um, surprisingly there don't seem to be the huge numbers of small pinpoint size bubbles suspended in the glass that I normally have when I make one of these things which makes me wonder if I'd put another quarter inch of glass on top of it maybe uh, it would have been fine but I'm going to go ahead with my fusing experiment I'm going to try and fuse another piece of glass on top of this um, first I'm going to put it in my vibratory lap and I'm going to plane this flat it's still got a little bit of a lip around the edge and it's a little bit ripply you can feel the ripples if you run your hand quickly across the glass. You can feel it sort of ripple high spots over the hexagons, low spots in the channels. So I'm going to plane this down nice and flat. And then I'll try fusing another piece of glass on top of it so it's thick enough to, uh, to actually grind. Then I'll turn it perfectly round into the correct diameter. Um, I'm going to leave the plaster in the hexagons for now. I'm not going to take it out. So it will support the glass and hold its shape when I heat it up to fuse it so it doesn't sag and move and change shape uh, hopefully the, the plaster will hold everything together for the uh, fusing operation and I may um, I may make some frit some glass frit and uh, just fill that that uh, channel um, that little void up right there before I fuse the other plate on top of this uh, we'll see maybe I'll just leave it like it is so so that's the plan uh, so far, things are working pretty well. Um, everything's going pretty good. Thanks for watching. Alright, here's the uh, hex blank out of the kiln after fusing a top plate of glass onto it. And it turned out pretty well. Um, good proof of concept. It's not perfect. It's got some issues, but uh, it, it came out pretty well. But, you know, 
going into this, I knew the blank had some issues. Uh, this dark area over here is, uh, you can actually see through the top layer of glass, you can see the little hole in, uh, that, was, that was present underneath before in the, over this uh, partial hexagon. So that hole was there before, but now it's, it's covered over and uh, probably would provide pretty good support uh, even with that hole there. But uh, it came out pretty well. You can just see the line there where the, the top plate is fused onto the bottom hexagonal casting. It uh, came out pretty well. Like I said, it's got some issues. It's not perfect. Um, let me turn it over and I'll show you some of the problems. Okay, if you look really closely, you can see that there are two little cracks here. Uh, apparently, at some point, the glass cracked in the kiln. Maybe I heated it up too quickly. Interestingly, no, though, during the, 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 the part of the firing where the uh, top plate was fused on, the cracks kind of healed themselves. So they, they've kind of closed up except at the very surface. So that's kind of a good thing, kind of a weird thing. Um, one of the problems is the edge is very irregular. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Um, I thought I had the mold laid out so that the edge would be slightly higher and I could machine it down to match uh, the level of the of the hexagons there, but for some reason it came out lower. So this is just a proof of concept piece. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I may just uh, try a little cold working on it. Maybe I can just sort of bevel this over here and uh, bring them together that way. I'll also um, cold work it to make it perfectly round and bring it down to diameter, if I decide to do that. Um, otherwise, it's it's looking pretty good. I mean, uh, the the hexagonal grid is is here. It's it's good. Um, the support points and uh, the holes for the pins are there. Um, I left the plaster in the hexagons while I did the fusing, just to prevent, uh, in theory anyway, to prevent the glass from distorting in shape. I thought that the plaster would hold it in shape, and it, it seems to have done that. So. That worked out pretty well. Um, at some point I'm going to have to dig all the plaster out of the hexagons and that's going to be a lot of work, but uh, it's, it's coming along pretty good. Uh, like I said, this for a proof of concept, this is, this is looking pretty good. I'll take what I learned from doing this one and um, the next one will be better. And the next one after that will be better and the next one after that will be better and they'll just keep getting better. So I'm pretty happy. This turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching the whole process. Bye.